I have the list, the following list of speakers on my short list. Honorable DJ Menier, Honorable M.S. Boy, and Honorable V.B. Ndrovu in that order. Yes, sir. You have the floor. Mr. President, you are the commander in chief of the South African National Defense Force. Now, because of poor decisions taken by yourself, the Defense Force was deployed in the CAR. And because of poor decisions taken by yourself, our soldiers were left dangling without the necessary equipment in a deadly firefight in the CAR. And ultimately, because of poor decisions taken by yourself, 15 of our soldiers died as a result of the deployment in the CAR. What happened in the CAR was an avoidable disaster and should never be allowed to happen again. Will the President therefore give us the assurance that, if the defense for, that the Defence Force will be properly equipped, properly trained and properly funded in the event it is deployed as part of the new Rapid Reaction Force under the auspices of the AEU so that we can avoid a repeat of the car disaster. The Honourable the President. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. If you had allowed me to help members to understand, maybe there would have been no need for this follow-up question. But you have the right to rule. <laughs> Firstly, there were no poor decisions taken on the matter of the Central African Republic. No poor decisions. <clears throat> Very proper procedures of establishing relationship with countries were followed. And the matter was, <clears throat> our soldiers were there to do the training. Not, they were not going there for a war. They were there for training, to train the soldiers of that country. <clears throat> that was the arrangement. And in that case, you don't send well-armed people to go and fight. Well, they're not going to fight. They are there for a mission to train other people. They're not there to fight. <clears throat> so can't, you can't put it as if there was a military operation, poor decision. But that was never the case. <clears throat> the, the country gets into its own problems which result in the rebels coming into being and fighting to take over the country. <clears throat> in the process of that uh, uh, interaction between <clears throat> the Central African Republic people who are quarreling, the region and AU intervene to stop the fighting. And they go to Libreville to actually have a an agreement that says the fighting must come to an end, they must handle the country together for a particular period. And indeed that happens. And these who come recognize the agreement between South Africa and their country. And we continue to be there to do, to, to, to be able to be ready to do that kind of task we're going to do. We're not there for war. They then quarrel again. And in the process, the rebels advance very quickly. In the process, they find our unit, which was not there to fight. They walk on it to it. They fight it. And we just fought it to defend ourselves in those circumstances. I don't think we should put it as if there was war there. We sent our soldiers to go and fight, and therefore we took poor decisions. No, not at all. So it's important for, for me to clarify the issue. When it comes to the decision that is taken by the AU, when we take those decisions, we'll take those decisions absolutely appropriately, knowing fully well what is it that we'll be doing. What, for an example, South Africa will contribute when other countries are contributing. It will be a discussed thing, and we'll know exactly what is it that we need to do. So we can assure the South Africans no wrong decision will be taken. We'll take the correct decisions to implement a collective decision of the AU. Thank you, Honorable Speaker.